with our next presenter, Sarah Schutt, who is the Chief Alumni Officer and Executive Director of the Wisconsin Alumni Association with the entitled presentation, A Bridge to Your Engagement Needs. A round of applause for Sarah, please. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much for the opportunity to be here today. Many thanks to Rob and to Daniel also for having a few minutes to share some of our insights and learnings and hopefully then uh, to continue learning from all of you. Tough acts to follow with Simon and with Gretchen. Um, but I'll take a little bit of a different turn. Rob had asked me to talk a little bit about our engagement strategies and how Graduate fits into that, but also what are the other impacts and variables that are informing our, our engagement strategy at the Wisconsin Foundation and Alumni Association. And we'll end with a little bit of the early learnings we have from our data. So UW-Madison, large Midwest land-grant public Research One University, founded in 1848. We have about 400,000 plus alumni around the world. About a third of them live in Wisconsin, and then about uh, a third of them um, live uh, in other key geographic areas around the country. Probably many of you know the same ones. And then another third sort of scattered elsewhere around the world. We have 11 schools and colleges. Our college letters in science is our largest, about half of the student population and about half of our alumni population. And that comes into play in a little bit when we talk about how we got started with Graduate. And we currently have around 43,000 students on our campus. About 30,000 um, are undergraduates. Um, the, it's important to also note the Wisconsin Alumni Association has been around since 1861, was formed by alumni, for alumni in the university. I've been at uh, WAA, now WFAA, since 2001, and uh, most of you met Paula this morning during the fireside chat, and you can see that I am a very lucky beneficiary of an incredible thought leader and passionate uh, mentor in, in this world. So before, so to get into understanding engagement strategy and how Graduate fits into our engagement strategy, uh, it's important to understand a little bit of the context that we have at UW-Madison. I'm thinking that some of these, these impacts are going to sound familiar to, to many of you. One of the things that led us up to uh, wanting to adopt an online networking platform for our alumni and for our students is the value proposition for higher education. We have heard a lot in the media um, that there is question about is the cost of higher education worth it? What do people get out of higher education? Um, what value does it bring that um, and is it worth the cost? Particularly in the state of Wisconsin, I would say that we have um, a governing body that perhaps is not as interested, shall we say, in higher education. And so within our own state, we're seeing through funding and um, just sort of general mentality, um, there's a threat to the value proposition. So in our thinking of our engagement strategies, we need to figure out a way to demonstrate the value of higher ed. And for us, um, in alumni relations and engagement, it is demonstrating the value of that alumni ne network. That is the value proposition that we have that nobody else has, is that alumni network. We've talked yesterday, and it's been referenced that certainly an impact with our, to our engagement strategies is this is just vast changes in technology, meeting our alumni where they're at, particularly the younger alumni cohort. We knew and we know through our data that we are under-engaging our alumni um, under the age of 40, yet they are a third of our alumni population. And we needed to figure out a way to reach them where they're at, um, through the channels they're at, and kind of move away from um, what we at Wisconsin call the old guys in red pants syndrome of engagement. There really were red pants with white W's on them. Um, move away from that and, and, um, and find people in a place where, where they are really interacting with each other. Uh, so those are sort of the, the larger contextual things that are driving our engagement strategy, particularly to our situation and to many of our Big Ten and other um, institutions, is that we uh, experienced an organizational merger about just over three years ago. The Wisconsin Alumni Association, previously a separate 501c3 organization of about 
about 50 people, merged with our University of Wisconsin Foundation, also a separate 501c3 organization at the time with about 180 some employees. I will say right now fully, absolutely the best, smartest, right thing to do. I would not change that. There are many, many benefits to that merger, um, but with benefits come costs, and there have been some costs too. And one of those costs uh, um, I, would, I would characterize is this idea of um, the reason why we're engaging alumni. And I was earlier this summer at a conference with the Big Ten Alumni Relations Directors, and we were on a panel, and the question was asked, do you serve the university or do you serve alumni? And that was so crystallizing for me just in terms of how, what informs our engagement strategy and what we should be doing as an institution. And I believe, and I have to keep saying every day, we serve the university by serving alumni. And the philosophical difference right now, post-merger, in this sort of urgent threat to higher education, comprehensive campaign environment that we're in and many of you are in, is that our end is the same. Our, all of our goal is to support our university. The means are quite different and often divergent. And so is one way to support the university, find the alumni who can give the most money and engage them or is the way to support the university, serve your alumni and build that affinity, and by virtue of that, kind of like in Simon's model, they will want to support the university. That has been, that is um, an ongoing tension and dialogue, and another reason why we needed to find a solution that could help us with that translation, that could have us both serve the alumni and the institution and be able to demonstrate that. Finally, the last piece, I alluded to this, we're in the last, the final third of a comprehensive campaign, a $3.2 billion campaign at the university. And of course, being in that situation, as many of you are, um, you know that that um, just creates a lot of energy and focus on fundraising, 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 and you start to slip into this monthly uh, bank statement mentality instead of this lifetime 401k mentality, which is the comfortable place and the appropriate place for alumni relations. So our challenge in devising our engagement strategies is boils down to we need to be relevant and we need to add value. And the interesting dynamic now is when I wrote this and I thought about this, I, I'm thinking with my alumni audience. We need to be relevant to alumni. We need to add value to their lives. The additional layer is that we also need to be relevant to the university and add value to the university. And we need to demonstrate that we are relevant in our organization and we add value to our whole merged organization, which uh, um, development is a large driver of. So therefore, our engagement strategies um, that we operate under and our objectives, and Chris, I may have flip-flopped these from your pyramid yesterday, um, but what we have decided and what we spend our energy and time doing at, at the Wisconsin Foundation and Alumni Association under the WAA brand is that our job is to fill, facilitate a sense of community among our alumni, to build their affinity to the university, to encourage their action and their participation in, in things that will help them and ultimately help the university, and then through that, inspire their support for the university. And our goal is that whatever we're doing with our alumni will help them feel more informed about what's happening at the university and, and with each other, more connected to the university and connected to each other and invested in the overall enterprise. And we believe that that is the path to engagement and ultimately the path to, to support. We also had done some research over the last few years. Um, we do an annual affinity survey of our alumni, which has been incredible um, to inform feelings and perceptions about where people are at. And then a number, uh, four or five years ago, there was a massive alumni survey put out to ask, what do you expect of your university? And we learned some consistent things. We learned that alumni associate um, their, their greatest need and want from their university is a network and career help. 
We also learned um, that they want to feel informed about their university, and we know from our affinity data that that feeling informed and connected are significantly, statistically significant variables in feelings of uh, affinity. So we were pretty sure that if we decided to go down the path of career networking, that we would be meeting the needs of the alumni. We also would be meeting the needs of our institution because um, allowing uh, us to, to demonstrate the value of the UW degree by having more of a connection point with alumni and mentoring relationships and with the career piece. I mentioned our College of Letters and Science. The dean um, of that school uh, or of that college, uh, his greatest priority is something he calls the career initiative and he's putting resource and fundraising around that and when we started in, in our conversations with graduate, we had a shared position, half LNS, half uh, WFAA to focus on careers and, and involving alumni in career development process. That was really important for us to get the first step in getting institutional buy-in and for us to align that pro our career development program with alumni with an institutional objective. So we had an opportunity to um, meet our alumni needs, um, demonstrate value of the degree to them and demonstrate value of career networking and the alumni network to the institution, building that relevance and that meaning on both fronts. We knew, as I mentioned, our younger alumni cohort were under-engaged, and we also knew that we don't have enough bodies on our staff to continue the in-person engagement paradigm we had been in, and we had to figure out a way to go to scale. Um, and you, all of you are facing that too. Finally, uh, in order to have this be effective, we knew we needed to get buy-in and provide a centralized resource. So along came graduate at the perfect time, at the confluence of these, these events, and we um, signed on in 2015 and launched in March of 2016, Badger Bridge, um, and we intentionally are focused on first the alumni to alumni connection. Uh, we wanted to focus first on, on engaging those young alumni that we haven't brought on board. While the student to alumni connection is important institutionally and to Dean Schultz and LNS, that's an area we're going to continue to build. But our focus and our rollout was really alumni first. We spent the first four months getting alumni onto the platform. And then in the summer of 16, we opened it up to students. And now we, do, we did joint um, um, acquisition um, with both of them. Um, and we continue to do that to do that to this day. And we, um, in our marketing plan, and I can't overemphasize enough, you saw a little bit of Gretchen's too, multiple channels, multiple ways, as many different ways as you can think of multiple times. The importance of a, of a well-developed marketing plan can't be, can't be overstated. So the question, well, that's kind of a funny color. Sorry, that's not our institutional color. I don't know, it looks kind of sepia-toned there, but um, <laughs> a little moment of nostalgia. Um, one of the questions Rob asked me to address was, well, how on this massive decentralized campus where deans really think about their school college as their fiefdom? I mean, LNS is bigger than many, many institutions at over 220,000 um, alumni and, and um, you know, a good 20,000 plus students. So how did you get campus buy-in? Well, there is really, I said this yesterday in the enterprise session, there is nothing like crisis and anxiety to inspire collaboration, right? So um, given the, the funding and the conditions and everything um, and the, the need for all of us to demonstrate the value of a degree, our campus partners are pretty, pretty open to the idea of figuring out a way to, to together work on that. Um, they also were totally in to have somebody else pay for it and somebody else um, administer it. So they do no work, they spend no money, they get the benefit, they're in. Um, it was a little more complicated about th than that, but um, that essentially, we were in the, in the right conditions for that to occur. We also um, have been able to demonstrate, but also pitched, we can get more information about alumni through this channel. About 65% of the people on our, on our Badger Bridge pull in their LinkedIn profiles. There's a lot of great information there that we didn't know about. That's a great benefit to us. We 
pitched to our campus partners that the data will be integrated with our Blackbaud CRM product, which I'll talk about in a minute, but we're super excited to be testing that best category of data integration right now. And of course, the ease of use for end user, and we did a bunch of demos with campus, and they understood and appreciated that and the appeal for all of us to engage more and new younger alumni. So this was the case we took to campus. And like I said, it wasn't too hard to sell. It was more the mechanics of it and people kind of letting go of their personal um, pet projects. Then we were engaged in a process of um, a comprehensive spreading the word. So my, there is a team that we have one person who pretty much her full-time job is Badger Bridge. And then there are about three others that have a chunk. One, um, our managing director who oversees it. My colleague Kate who is here who is taking on the programmatic leadership and then we have a marketing manager and they're sort of the core team. And they, um, what was planned for the campus rollout involved everything from meeting with career advisors to um, meeting with the student leadership group, training academic advisors, going to the career fairs, and this was key, meeting with the boards of visitors because those are the folks who most want to help and they are helping on their board, but they love the students and they want to help with the students. So that was a brilliant move on Dave's part to go to boards of visitors meetings and pitch this to them. Because once your academic department's board is on board, you got no choice, right? Um, so those were, those were some of the, the tactics. Where we're at right now, we're over 10,000 enrollments on Badger Bridge. We met our goal for our first year. We're very excited about that. We're at about an 80-20 split of alumni and students, which is also where we want to be right now. We've got a 75% willing to help indicator, and I love hearing, I'm starting to think about our, our engagement score and that willing to help and appreciate Gretchen and Simon's insights on that and thinking about that in a little different way now. About 2,000 unique relationships there, and we've gotten great info updates from you know, about 850 or more people. So this is all great data, sort of where we're at right now. We have a lot of room to grow when it comes to content, putting content out, and actually now building community among those 10,000 plus people on the platform. But we're happy with where, with where we are. This is um, a glimpse, you know, we all get those great dashboards from Dahlia, or we get ours from Dahlia. I love getting those quarterly. And um, when I said earlier on that we, we went down this path partly to engage our young alumni, you can see, and I was very gratified to see, that Badger Bridge is that tool that is engaging our young alumni, our 18 to 24 group and 25 to 34 group, our two highest groups that are on the platform. That's exactly what we wanted. And um, we haven't had anything that has done that successfully for us before now. So we, what we did was we looked at our regular data, our dashboard data, and then I mentioned um, we've been involved with Graduate for a number of months, and by we I mean our apps dev team, not me, um, in, in working on the CRM integration, which has been tremendously helpful. We're very, very excited about that. But we did this overlay of the Badger Bridge data with our CR, CRM database, and I want to conclude with just sharing a few of the insights um, with you. One of them, as I mentioned, that, that we, have, um, we have engaged our young alumni. Over 6,300 people on the platform um, are in that under 40. And of those 2,500 of them, that is their first engagement with the university. There is nothing that we do in the Alumni Association that engages that many people in a year, let alone that many people for the first time. And Badger Bridge has now surpassed giving as the, the portal for first-time engagements for us for that younger cohort. Previously, the most common first-time engagement for under 40s was some sort of a gift, student gift, five-year out gift. Now it's Badger Bridge. That's huge in terms of demonstrating value to the institution and to our, and our alumni love it. Huge for me. Um, we also learned, and I have a slide in a second that tells you a little more about this, that the folks who aren't young, who aren't that under 40, the over 40 for folks on the bridge, are our most highly engaged alumni. Now there might be, uh, there, intuitively you might think, well, wouldn't you want new alumni engaged on Badger Bridge over 42? Yes, but it's more valuable to us to have the highly engaged alumni on Badger Bridge. Why? 
because if they're serving as mentors to the young first-time engaged alumni, they are demonstrating that culture of engagement and support for the university. They also are the ones who are more likely to, to support the university in some way, and this is now another way for them to get meaning and relevance in their lives. So we learned in doing the overlay with our CRM data um, that our Badger Bridge population and our current population um, that our Badger Bridge folks over-index in some really significant areas for us. One of them I've mentioned a number of times is our alumni under 40 engage, are um, more active on Badger Bridge, obviously, um, that, that almost 55% of Badger Bridge are them, whereas about a third of them in the base alumni. There, we over-index on the people who are event registrants, but here's where it, that translation issue and that means to the end issue really comes into play. That our alumni on Badger Bridge over index in the folks who've given in the past five and 10 years. They over index in our WAA member participation. We still have a paid membership and we'll, we'll hang on to that. Um, over index that half of our alumni, more than half of the alumni on Badger Bridge are already donors. And the last two, LAG and MG, leadership annual giving and major giving, we have predictive models that we apply. The folks that are on Badger Bridge um, index higher, and you can see a 10, um, 6 and 10 percent point difference higher than the rest of the alumni population. These are our most engaged alumni on Badger Bridge. How awesome that we, even, we know even more about them, what they're interested in, their, their employment status, and have another point of contact with our most highly engaged alumni, in addition to engaging folks who've never engaged with us before. Finally, okay, so what have, where are we at with all of this? Badger Bridge and this whole career program continues to create more questions and opportunity for me than it resolves, but that's an incredible place to be in. So we've been able to now, with just the last year plus active on the platform, um, we are hiring a new position that's a director of student and recent grad engagement that will focus on our career programming and Badger Bridge. And now we'll have the student giving campaign with it. That's brand new for us. And we're really excited to see how we can put the two together. We're starting to work more. Um, um, we're super excited about the group function. We're going to lean into going by industry groups and then testing it out, um, maybe with some geographic and other groups. We're looking forward to more data integration and asking questions of our data and analytics team that will give us more insights. And we're starting to move into a space with our corporate partners. We have several um, large corporations, American Family, Epic, Best Buy, Kohl's, General Mills, Target. We have a high concentration of alumni and creating groups for them and having them build their own professional communities where they work great deal of potential for us. And then finally, we're, we're collaborating on engagement strategy even more with our campus partners now that they have seen um, how this tool works and the, and the value that it brings. I'm certain I've gone over time. Um, I appreciate your time and attention, and I'm going to give it back to Rob. Thank you so much, Sarah. Okay.